With that out of the way, let's get started. So first of all, Syngoniums are an aeroid. They are part of the Aresia. Areca. Areca. Aresia. What the f***? <laughs> ah! Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we are gonna keep it pretty simple and pretty classic. We are gonna do a how to care, repot and propagate video. And this time we're gonna focus on syngoniums. Now I always say that pothos is probably the number one houseplant for beginners because they do teach you a lot of the fundamentals when it comes to houseplant care, especially if you're just a newbie trying to get into the plant game. But I would say syngoniums is a very, very close second. So in today's video, I'm gonna share with you guys and cover the general care requirements for your syngoniums and then we're gonna do a bit of repotting and then we're gonna cap it off with some propagation at the end of this video. Now, for those of you guys who do enjoy these types of content, like how to care and propagate videos, be sure to comment, give it a like or share it with a planty friend. With that out of the way, let's get started with this video. So first of all, syngoniums are part of the Aracea family, so they are aeroids and they're native to tropical rainforests of you know Southern Mexico, West Indies, Central and South America. And in the wild, they can grow anywhere between like 10 to 20 meters, even taller than that, typically climbing on neighboring trees. As a household or indoor plant, they are typically called like arrowhead vines, partly because of the way the leaf shape are. And you guys can see right here, they kind of resemble that arrowhead shape. They do come in many varieties, like non-variegated or variegated kinds. And I do have four with me in my collection right now. I have this mojito that you guys can see here. It has that nice green on green variegation and I really, really love this one. And then I also have this one lendy eye, um, known to have a little bit more of that silver white variegation in the mid rib. I do find that the leaves on this one has that nice iridescent shine, especially against the light. And then you have here the uh, Syngonium Pink Splash, known to have that nice pink variegation along with the green. I find that when a new leaf shows up, it's a nice bright pink and as it matures, it becomes a little bit more muted that you guys see here. And then a common popular one right now, which is the Alva variegata, and you guys can see why everyone wants the Syngonium, a very, very beautiful variegation of that white and green. And that's another reason why I love Syngoniums and why I think they're perfect for beginners. They come in so many varieties. I do wanna add a few more in my collection. And whenever you add a variety, it just doesn't feel like you're adding the same type of plant. They're so uniquely different from each other, especially when you start getting to like the pattern or sometimes the shape of the leaves. So now let's jump into to the general care requirements for your syngoniums. We'll start off with the lighting. These guys do prefer a lot of that bright indirect light. So that means giving them as much view of the sky as possible and making sure that the sun rays or sunbeams are not hitting your plant or the leaves of it because the leaves here or the foliages are somewhat thin. So they are gonna be sensitive to that direct sunlight and they will burn. So I have most of my syngoniums here in the living room, you know, either on the coffee table or in the media unit or on top of that mills bowl. And you guys can see that I have a large south facing window. So it does get a lot of that nice bright indirect light. Now, if you only have low or medium light, you know, don't worry about it. Your plant will still thrive in that lighting environment. The only thing you may notice is your plant may not grow as fast or it may not produce as big of leaves as possible, you know, if they were, you know, closer to that bright indirect light. And a good example of that is the Syngonium Pink Splash that you guys see. I actually had this uh, closer to my window on top of that mills bowl, but a couple months ago, I actually moved it back, you know, around here in my living room, actually over there in that uh, wine rack right there. And it does get a little bit more of that low medium light because it is farther from the window. It is farther from, you know, having a full view of that sky. And as a result, I'm noticing that the new leaves are actually growing a little bit smaller than its previous leaves. So when I noticed that, I did move it a little bit closer to the window to kind of give it that more bright indirect light. And the other thing to also keep in mind is if you do have variegated varieties of syngoniums or most variegated plants, is you do want to have them closer to the window and giving them a lot more of that bright indirect light because they don't have as much green on their leaves to be able to capture that sunlight and photosynthesize. So if you don't want your variegated houseplant to revert back to green, make sure that you give them a little bit more of that bright indirect light. Now let's talk a little bit about watering your syngonium. So my rule of thumb when it comes to most of my houseplants is I actually like to allow the soil to dry out completely. And that means that the soil from the top to the bottom of the pot is completely dry before watering them. However, with syngoniums, I found that they do better is you don't want to allow that soil to dry out completely, especially when they are showing new growth like this Albo variegata. You guys can see there is a new leaf that has not unfurled and along that petiole, it's already pregnant and there's already a new leaf coming out of that. So I want to make sure that I actually don't allow that soil to dry out completely. So what I'll typically do is water it when it's about like 85 to maybe 90% dry. So what typically will happen when it comes to watering your plant is the roots will obviously absorb that water, you know, bring it up to the plant. 
photosynthesis takes place, converts it to energy and sugar, and then brings it back down to the plants. So by not allowing this to dry out, it does ensure that that new growth that's taking place is getting the energy and the nutrients in order for it to continue to thrive, grow bigger, and not get stunted. So very similar to how I treat my alocasias. I find that with alocasia, when there's a new leaf showing up, I wanna make sure that I do not allow the soil to dry out completely. And the only drawback when it comes to that is you just gotta be mindful that you don't you know, overwater your plant. So the key thing when it comes to that is making sure that that water is draining through. What I typically like to do when I'm watering my plant is actually poke holes at the bottom of the drainage holes because what sometimes will happen is that will get so compact and tight there that the water will not drain through. So I usually like to do that before I water them. And you guys can see here, once I finish doing that, then I'll water my plant from the top and allow that water to drain through before placing it back to the decorative pot. So that is kind of my uh, rule of thumb when it comes to watering my syngoniums. Um, you know, during the winter time, I will allow the soil to dry out completely, partly because they aren't in an active growth stage like they are during the summer months. So now let's talk about the potting medium to use for your syngoniums. You know, like I said, these guys are very low maintenance. They don't need anything super fancy. Just make sure your potting soil isn't too heavy because you don't want to risk overwatering your house plant. So what I typically use is simple miracle Grow regular potting mix, cacti soil, and perlite. And my ratio is about equal parts of that. So a third of potting soil, a third of cacti soil, and a third of perlite. Now, if you only have like two of the three ingredients like potting soil and perlite, then just do equal parts of those. Or if you only have cacti soil and perlite, just do equal parts of those. The key thing is just make sure you have a bit of perlite or pumice, you know, to really add that extra drainage because like I said, you don't want to risk overwatering your house plants, especially if you're not going to allow your soil to dry out completely between watering. So that is my go-to potting mix. Now let's talk a little bit about the common houseplant pests that you may experience with your syngoniums. Uh, the most common ones are probably aphids, spider mites, uh, mealybugs, and maybe scales. I personally have never experienced any of those pests on any of my syngoniums and partly because I actually stay on top of my pest control management and regime when it comes to my syngoniums and most of my house plants. So what I do then is I actually spray down my plants whenever I go and water them and the insecticide spray that I use is actually end all and what I'll do is mix about 50 milliliters of this in my one liter spray bottle that you guys see and then I'll add a couple drops of neem oil, shake this up and then spray my house plants and this is really a good preventative measure because back in the day when I used to not do this. I would only do it when I noticed like pests on it and at that point <laughs> you're almost uh, you know fighting like a losing battle when it comes to houseplant pests especially if you allow them to get out of hand. So for me I just like to you know keep on top of my uh, pest control management not get lazy about it just to make sure you know um, things don't get out of hand and um, you know I prevent any pests from happening on my houseplants. Now when it comes to humidity you know some may say that they thrive better in high humid environment and that is absolutely true they would prefer that type of environment However, I find that they do perfectly fine in my relative room humidity level here in my living room, which is about 30% during the summer months and about maybe like 20% during the winter, uh, maybe 15, you know. During the winter months, I will turn on my humidifier, uh, but during the summer months, I actually don't use a humidifier and they do just fine. Now, if you do wanna give additional humidity on your syngoniums, uh, you can use a humidifier or you can use the pebble and tray water tray. Or if you have a greenhouse, you can definitely put them in there. I've actually put a few of the syngoniums in the greenhouse during the winter months, uh, you know, partly because again, the uh, humidity level here in Toronto drops pretty low here during the winter months. Now you can fertilize your syngoniums if you want to. Uh, I personally don't, but if you are to fertilize it, just make sure you are doing it during the growing season. So that's during the spring and summer months. Make sure you are using a even balance fertilizer and also make sure that you follow the labeled instructions because you don't wanna over fertilize your syngoniums like I said, they have quite thin uh, foliage and leaves. So if you do over fertilize your syngoniums, it can cause a lot of burning on the foliage and on the leaves. So uh, just be mindful and make sure that you are diluting that fertilizer and you are following that labeled instructions. Now we're gonna do a bit of repotting and then we're gonna do a bit of propagation and kind of just walk you guys through those steps and talk a little bit about that process. All right guys, so when it comes to repotting your syngoniums, the one thing to keep in mind is to not do it based on the foliage or the size of the leaves. You wanna do it based on the root system it currently has. A good way to know if your plant needs to be repotted is to see if the roots are starting to show at the bottom of the drainage holes or they're starting to kind of coil around the soil when you kind of remove it. That's usually a good indication that your houseplant needs to be repotted. 
With this Syngonium Mojito right now, I actually don't see any roots going through the bottom. But when we take it out, we'll take a look to see how the roots are coiling around the soil. The reason why I want to repot this, uh, either a size up or keep it in the same container, is I actually want to add a bit of a bamboo pole or bamboo stake here to give it additional support because I am finding that this is getting taller and it's starting to kind of lean over and you want to make sure that your plant isn't going to like snap off. So I do just want to add that additional support, but let's find out if we do need to move it to size up. So I'm just going to remove uh, the potting soil that currently is in here and we'll try and gently squeeze this guy out and see how the roots are. Okay. Yeah. So roots aren't, you know, coiling around the soil, uh, still has a small root system. So I actually will not want to move this up to a bigger size because I made a mistake last year of moving my Wendlandii uh, from a four inch to a six inch um, because the foliage was getting bigger and it was growing pretty fast. And I thought it needed, you know, a bigger pot. What eventually happened was, you know, there was a lot more soil than there were roots. So I ended up overwatering it, resulting in a lot of the leaves actually turning yellow and brown. And that is why this is very long and there's no foliage here at the bottom of this vine is because, you know, I lost a lot of leaves uh, when I repotted this. So I actually had to move this back down into a four inch pot uh, once I realized that the root system, you know, wasn't big enough for that size of a pot. So with this mojito, similar thing, the roots aren't coiling around, they're not th you know, showing through the uh, drainage hole. So we're gonna keep it in the same pot, but we are just gonna add this um, bamboo pole that I have here. And uh, so I'm just gonna place this guy back in, add <laughs> the potting soil that I move. And you guys can see here that my soil consists of perlite, you know, regular potting mix and some um, cacti soil. So I'm just gonna place this guy right here. Here's what I wanna do. Now I'm debating if this bamboo pole is a little bit short for him. You know what, we'll, we'll leave it for this size until the vine kind of hits the top here and then we'll replace it with a taller one. But for now, I just want to add a bit of support and then we're going to use garden tape to, um, you know, kind of hold this guy back uh, with the uh, bamboo pole there. All right, so top up the potting soil that we had. Okay, I have some more of my go-to potting mix right here. I'll just give it a bit of a top up. Okay, so now what I wanna do is actually get my garden tape. Hold on. So this is a Velcro garden tape that you can find at your local you know, garden center or big box store. And these are great to kind of help uh, vining plants attach to a moss pole or a trellis or you know whatever support you want it uh, your plant in so I'm just gonna wrap one right there just kind of hold them up and there we go ta-da so we ended up you know somewhat repotting this mojito um, again it wasn't ready to move up to a size uh, that's the other thing about syngoniums is you know sometimes some of your houseplants needs repotting like every year. But with Syngoniums, you know, I don't necessarily think you need to repot them every year. Again, rule of thumb is just make sure that those roots are starting to show through the drainage holes or they're starting to coil around the soil, you know, before repotting them to a bigger size. Um, so that is repotting our Syngonium. So when it comes to propagating your Syngonium, it's actually really easy to do. All you need to do is find a node and cut below that. So a node is the area where new growth points will grow out of and roots will come from. And you guys can see right now on this Alvo variegata, there is a node right there with a couple aerial roots showing and there's another node right there just below that. So what you wanna do is cut between those nodes, which is the inner node area. And you wanna leave at least half an inch below the node of where you wanna cut. Now, do you need to see aerial roots first before you cut and propagate your syngoniums? Uh, no, you don't need to. As long as you have that clear node and identify where it is and cut below that, roots will eventually grow out of those nodes. So for example, on this uh, mojito, this was the mother plant that you guys see right here. This is where I originally cut. And this was that top cutting. You guys can see right here. And it was attached like this. And you guys can see that I cut just between or below that node, leaving about half an inch. 
I then put the cutting in water, you know, in an area that gets a lot of bright indirect light. And you guys can see how crazy the roots have grown. And I typically will allow the roots to be at least two inches or longer before potting it in a potting medium, uh, whether it's in sphagnum moss or in my go-to, you know, potting soil that I have most of my syngoniums in. So with this one, it's definitely ready to be potted up in our potting mix. And we're gonna move it to a three and a half inch size of a pot because again, the root system isn't too crazy. So we wanna make sure we're not potting this uh, too big of a pot. Just gonna add a bit of my potting soil here. I have it right here place my cutting there. You guys can see where it's sitting. So that's a good height. And then just top it up with some more soil. Ta-da! And then you want to give it a good drink and then uh, place it in an area that gets bright indirect light. So that is our mojito cutting that we've been propagating. So one of the common questions I often get from beginners is what happens to the mother plant when you cut and propagate? Like most houseplants, if they are healthy, they will continue to grow. And what will typically happen is the new growth point or growth vine will come out of that node that is closest from the top. So for example, with our mojito mother plant here that we took a cutting off, you guys can see where that cut is. And just below that is the closest node to the top. And that is where this uh, new growth vine kind of shot out and already there's a new leaf emerging from this uh, petiole. So that typically is what's gonna happen with your syngonium. Now with this one lendi eye that I've been cutting and propagating, uh, as I mentioned, it got really tall, the leaves really dropped, but I cut it from the top and I took that top cutting, you know, rooted in water and then planted that one in a potting medium. And then that mother plant, which is this, shout out this new vine, again, off to the side where that node is that's closest to the top. And there's actually a baby new growth that's growing, you know, just below that node as well. So what I actually wanna do is cut this uh, top off. So that way it can focus a lot more of its energy on that new baby growth. And then from there, you know, grow some more leaves and then repeat the process and so on. So I'm actually just gonna cut between those nodes. So you guys can see, here is that area. I'm just gonna cut right there. Okay. So here is our cutting. And again, you wanna put this in water. And sometimes people ask me, do you allow your cuttings to, you know, sit and callus a bit before placing it in water? Um, it depends on the plant. I think with syngoniums um, and certain plants that don't have like thick vines or, um, you know, I actually will not you know, let the callus, I just stick it in water right away. Uh, partly because, um, you know, these guys need the water to kind of maintain uh, the leaves. Um, you know, if you, if you allow it to dry out too much, the leaves will actually dry out pretty fast and it'll be hard to revive them. So I just stick it in water right away. The key thing is just make sure your scissors are clean and that that cutting is uh, also clean as well. So, so there you guys have it. That is how I go about caring for my syngoniums, you know, repotting and propagating it. Again, they are perfect for beginners, especially if you, you know, have a lot of pothos already and you want to add a different variety of beginner houseplants. This is a great addition to your collection. A great way for you to continue to practice that plant care skills and master it before moving on to a little bit more of the harder and more rare and sensitive type of houseplants. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Comment below and let me know. Other than that, enjoy your weekend and we'll see you guys soon. Peace.